Welcome, welcome, welcome to Dog Star. We are Sun Dogs, and we're sitting down with Papa Squat. Heck yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming through. We know you're yeah. a, a man of many facets, a man of many hats, as they say. Yeah. So thanks for taking the time to share with us. Heck yeah. I like you guys. Mm-hmm. I like going to do this. I was on in the last studio. Exactly. Yeah, back in the studio. Long, long time ago. Oh, really? September of yeah, 2019. Yeah. So yeah, that would yeah. run the basement of the church. Glad you re- you remembered or mm-hmm. looked it up and re- I have it written down. Right <laughs> <here>. <laughs> yeah, that it seems so recent, but it really yeah, wasn't. It yeah. was a while ago, and yeah. we were covering a lot of like the B and E history mm-hmm. because you were there with Io. Yeah, and um, we kind of want to get a little bit more of your history. Like, was your dad a rock and roll? Like, is your dad Aerosmith or something? Like yeah, <laughs> we'll go down memory lane here in a sec. On your last appearance, which everyone can listen to currently on Spotify and Anchor, uh, right, you talked cool. a little bit about um, the, you started as a bassist in the metal band, the origins of B&E, like we were saying. Yeah. Uh, you throw on these Halloween shows, which I heard the one this year was pretty sick. Yeah, too. yeah, we just got done with it. This is so topical. I love and, it. It's and <laughs> then uh, if uh, you, were talk- you were talking about the formation of uh, church, the weekly church yeah. gatherings. I'm not sure if those are still going on yeah. either. But, um, yeah, we, we still do church. I just threw a, a Halloween show. I'm, st- I'm once again, I guess, yeah, once again, a uh, bass player in a metal band. Right. Yeah, so that full uh, circle. We'll talk about just that. Comes back too. Around, yeah. <laughs> let's hop in the time machine. Yeah, hop in the DeLorean. Go. Yeah. How did you get introduced to music or what, what was like where you're in choir in school? Or? Yeah, even before the bass. Yeah, sure. Um, my, my parents were. They listen to really lame music, so I can't really credit mm. them at all. Are we talking would, like what? A like Elvis and Huey Lewis, and okay, yeah, not okay. for me. I mean, while I'm just people, I'm not trying to yuck anybody. No, yeah, right. but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that they were very close-minded in what they listened to. I <laughs> guess mm. it's very like top '40s stuff from their generation. Yeah, and, okay. And that's it. I think um, what got me into music the most was like probably St. Paul Public Schools, um, just being. You know, hearing music on the bus or trading tapes with people on the bus. Um, I would credit St. Paul Public Schools once again, probably for getting me into music. Besides my musical interests that I found through searching out different types of music, mm-hmm. um, wow. I was afforded the opportunity to play a lot of different instruments before I found bass. Cool. Such as? Um, I played violin, cello. I mean, they always taught you like recorder, but I also right. took like. Um, a djembe class, which is like an African hand drum. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, I took a music course in high school that was aimed at like less reading music and more music history and types and genres and, and creativity. Mm. Um, I wish I could remember. I think her name was Miss Gruppner at Harding. Okay. Um, that class changed a lot for me. During high school, I had tried playing guitar, but it didn't stick quite as good Mm -hmm. as what ended up with bass. Um, I obviously went to the wrong high school. Yeah. This sounds awesome. And I have a one-off story from, I think, what a lot of other people do. I just kind of got lucky with some classes that existed for very short periods of time. Had some influential teachers. Yeah, and um, music, you know, throughout high school and everything, growing up kind of rough and poor was a good escape for me. So being able to channel that creatively while also being like soothed by music and finding calm in music Mm -hmm. um, was awesome. I got to explore something and push that energy in a direction that uh, obviously went and uh, applied to the rest of my life. You need me to take that? Uh, I'm trying to turn (laughs) the volume down. I'm just just messing with (laughs) uh, you. After you? Oh, I was going to say, yeah, how did you start figuring out that you wanted to like perform it were you like seeking out these classes or was it like you got to pick between band and choir this year like what are you doing um so i did like i don't know if it's called it was on ojt on the job training throughout um school so i worked yeah. throughout high school i got to go home early and so i only needed a certain amount of credits yeah and i only had to do the important ones mm-hmm. yeah so i kind of got to go to school for a little while take like a music class we had a recording class and then the other one was called like mozart to metal i think it was called cool um and then go to work and then i'd get off early enough to go home and, and practice and i always knew i wanted to do music mm-hmm. everything kind of just lined up for me to be able to like consistently express myself through music yeah. and i started bands in i mean as early as middle school um, okay. when i wanted to play guitar but kept on through high school um 
played I've played and performed and written in I don't know a number but like eight plus different genres in different bands throughout like whether oh it was gosh. metal or reggae or different subgenres of metal or yeah. hip hop I've done folk um I recently started an outlaw country project with a local rapper I, capacity. I love that. Yeah, so I've <laughs> got the yeah, beard um, for it. You look Duck Dynasty yeah. with the beard. You can pull, definitely pull it off. Well, do you remember <laughs> any of the uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> um, band names from back in the day? Um, or did you ever go under any other pseudonyms in the bands? Uh, I, uh, I've never had any other pseudonyms other than Papa Squat, which I kind of just use as a general artist name for producing or in glass eyes as the our band name because we both we have a kind of gimmick there yeah um i don't like use it a ton so that's kind of a b and e thing that started from b and e and mm-hmm. was like a term of endearment given to me okay. from doing hip-hop with b and e i did have i've had numerous um aborted projects that have all had tons of different names uh asylum yeah. it was just asylum without the a that nice. was like one of the first metal bands we tried to start okay. um shut it down young when we were really into system of a down yes. <laughs> it's like got a very <laughs> similar ring to it yeah. um i was in a reggae band called los ojos rojo i was in a um deathcore band for a while called at mercy's will that got fairly well known around saint paul and up north a little bit and stuff like that that's awesome um, Storms of Coming was another band I was in. Um, and those are, yeah, just the ones that all like didn't work out. I'm currently yeah. in like six projects maybe at one time or what? so. What? Yeah, from all the different things I got going on. That's <laughs> wild. What was the the first beckoning of the stage when mm-hmm. were you first on stage and you first felt that funny feeling? <laughs> Amazing feeling. One of the yes. best feelings. Um, that would be with At Mercy's Will. Okay. I had replaced a different bass player. We performed and practiced, or rather practiced, up north in Rush City, which is about an hour north. So I would uh-huh. drive out for weekends yeah. um, and stay up there and then drive an hour back in my crappy car back and forth every weekend practicing. And <laughs> the first show I ever did was part of a three-day tour. So it was extremely nerve-wracking. I can imagine. Um, I got dizzy and, and weird and dissociative on stage, and I, like, bonked my head on my guitar at one point, oh. headbanging, because oh, I didn't wow. really have my stage coordination down yeah. yet. Yeah. And it was awful, and we didn't we had messed up a couple things. But then the next night, we had one of our best shows ever, because mm. it was just it was a different environment. We got that first one, the bad pancake out of the way, yep. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, then, and we cooked, you know? And we, we didn't have that moment after the first show where – you know, these seven guys all like hugged it out and was like, that's awesome. We didn't yeah. get that until the second one where we actually felt like we had done something good, you know. And, and how old were <laughs> you at this point? Um, I would have been, I would have been, let's see, I was in high school. Oh, So, okay. yeah, I was working and going to school and then I would yeah. leave. So I'd been uh, 17. Wow. Yeah. And that was like the first tour was like a three-day tour. Uh, the last stop was a battle of the bands. So oh there's a lot God. of pressure. It was like a yeah. movie. Yeah. It was a, it was a lot of pressure. It was very, I was like tossed out to the sharks and sink or swim time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, were the other members of the band also your age or were they a few years your senior? Um, everybody was around the same age except our drummer was a little younger. Okay. Mm. But um, there wasn't like a 46 year old guy. No, no. The drums no. Or I've been part of projects like that. Hey, they, there's no, yeah. uh, music knows no age oh, and I that's agree. what I love. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. That's when you first were on the stage, when you first knew when it, when it goes well, you feel mm-hmm. euphoria. Yeah. And, and that's a, it's a big thing from that being like my first on stage performance, at least in, in music, um, to going home and then being like, right, when's the next one? It, it's, yeah. it's a big first moment to have it be a part yeah. of a little tour, a, a battle of the bands. And it, it was intense, but also taught me a lot very quick. Very <laughs> early too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. That's awesome. That's huge. That's yeah. wild. Is I I value those memories a lot. <laughs> and then yeah, we the episode you were in back in 2019 or whatever. You're talking about how you were in a band. Uh, I was, was in a band. Also Walrus is in a band. Jake was in another one. And then Jake Pringles. Uh, Born Hated. Mm-hmm. You guys were all playing the same shows or something. Same venues. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so like uh, the metal bands, we all play. I played shows with Jake's band, um, and you know, I all played shows with Walrus's band. I played with um, Io's band. So, yeah, we all kind of tossed around. And then me and 
Skydrum met through like a party and then cool. kind of connected through music. So I would go to the Born Hated shows and then their crew would come to our metal shows. Okay. And well before hip hop, we were both, even though we were different genres, supporting each other because yeah. we liked what the other person did so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mutual respect and that mutual support. It's, mm -hmm. That's so awesome. Well, yeah. what, because uh, I love kind of the, you know, origins of metal, origins of, or origins of metal evolving into kind of harder hip hop, evolving back into more metal is what you're doing nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and the music I make with Glass Eyes is different than the other projects that I had done because those projects were arguably heavier, but with uh, Glass Eyes doing what we, you would call new metal, mm -hmm. it's basically an amalgamation. It's like metal soup. So you get metal, but you get aspects of jazz or aspects of hip hop um, or lighter genres get tinged in, whether it's funk or yeah. you know things like that. So you might have a metal breakdown, but then it stops for a funk bass line. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it worked. It's something we always wanted to do in B&E and have always talked about because so many of us love that kind of music, the early 2000s Slipknot and Korn and Mudvayne and um, Motigrader and, and bands like that, especially in the Midwest, because that's a very Midwest specific thing, mm. Mushroom Head and all those different bands. And we finally made it line up after years. Sometimes I have posts that come up that, were like joke posts from like three years ago that were like, I need to start a new metal band with, with Benny and Jake and Evan. Oh. And, then, yeah, and then we eventually just did. It just kind of wow. panned out that way. And the premonition. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. That's, That's sweet. I love that. I never knew that there were um, like criteria for like an orthodox metal song. You know, I'd ever, sure, I yeah. didn't know that the, I mean, I'm sure with every genre there are um, uh, rules, limitations, rules. Sure. I, and we ignore them for the most part. But yeah. I think the similar comparison for hip hop would be like transitioning from swag rap to mumble rap to drill rap mm. to, uh, you know, and you'll always have the old school style or yeah. the, the mm. chopper style. And with metal, they just kind of always like to have a specific label for it. Interesting. You know, I, I can identify certain aspects like, yeah, this is kind of hip hop y. This is, but um, mm -hmm. that's why I like new metal because it's easy for me to slap a label on. It's like <laughs> an amalgamation of genres yeah, and, yeah. and it is quite limitless. So whatever I do, I can just call it that and it's easier. <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, it sounds very friendly being otherwise being like, yeah, we're the hip hop crew who's got the drummer mm -hmm. and the electric guitar and the, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's a le less elitist, which hip hop can, or I'm sorry, well, hip hop too, but yeah. metal can often be. It's kind of the anti. Like, don't you specific dare genre. call yourself <laughs> this if yeah. you're not this. That's crazy. And certain <laughs> bands hate that label, but we fully embrace it because yeah. I think it's rad. Yeah. I, and I think it's easily uh, palatable and marketable mm -hmm. to your demographic. You know, it's. Yeah. What the heck is new metal hop trance M? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just yeah, it's a little easier. <laughs> and since we've already explored a lot of genres in B and E for our specific audience, yeah. it's been mm -hmm. a good and easy transition because those elements have always been there. It's just the other side of the coin now. I mean, you and the whole crew, you're you're blending it together seamlessly. Thank you. We try. Uh, yeah, try to make it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make it look. I mean, we uh, we are privy to at least some of the the effort, some of the countless exactly. hours that all everyone over there is putting in. So it's yeah. Keep it up. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> is the B and E music like also encompassing the metal, the new metal glass eyes band? Is that like yeah. in B and E technically? Yeah, and um, so up until recent, so we're currently working on getting a new guitar player, which mm -hmm. is going quite well. Excellent. But all the writing and everything for the first record, um, four out of five of us were members of B and E. It was mm -hmm. recorded in the same studio. Okay. It was um, mixed and mastered by IO. So the same person that does the hip hop was wow. mixing and mastering the metal. All right, you know, I was recording. <laughs> All right, no, he's not dead, but he's <laughs> he's out of the. Right? Yeah, yeah, he um, he had to step away from music in general. He was a part of a lot of different projects. Yeah, and mm -hmm. had stepped away. So we've spent a good portion of this year uh, working on. Reworking Glass Eyes, which I can't talk about quite yet. Yeah, it's I was going to say, pretty good. It's, uh, I don't want you to reveal um, too much. It's still very much an active project. I, see, I see those guys every single weekend. That's so, good. That's, yeah. I mean, it's that's how you need, to, it's how you succeed, is getting yep. together, practicing, practicing, mm -hmm. practicing, 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 <laughs> practicing, and then maybe a little practicing. Right, mm -hmm. and, uh, and what we do is just don't 
talk about it until we're done practicing. <laughs> and then, and so when people see the product, you know, whether it's been a couple months or a year, yeah. it's polished, it's well done. And, and that's what I'm working on right now. Wow. So well, that, make, size, yeah. that makes me very excited and inspired. It's uh, to know that the tenacity of you guys' work ethics blend so well together is yeah, yeah, definitely. It's exciting. It's and it helps that I've been friends with these people for so long. But the addition of Benny into the fold of like being around all these B and E people is so seamless because mm -hmm. he's just such a great guy and an amazing drummer. And he's also involved in a ton of projects. So okay. when we get together, we don't waste any time. You mm -hmm. know, something I've come to find out recently is I don't want to work with anybody that's not working on anything right now. As good mm -hmm. as that sounds, maybe there's a reason they're not working on anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe they haven't worked on anything in quite a while, and I don't know that. I'd rather get get along or you know make it work with somebody who's going to work within time frames and use that time well. Precisely. Right. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, we definitely got a lot of questions to ask you about, uh, like building a crew. Like your, the B and E crew is uh, one of the best examples I can think of of like a music collective definitely. here in Minnesota. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, well, we probably don't have time before the break to ask you like a really <laughs> long, in depth question like this. So let me ask you, uh, <laughs> what do you think out of all the things that B and E does? What do you think you're the best at? Um, I'm, I'm the best at doing all the things that nobody else wants to do. <laughs> um, and Such that's, part, that's why I really enjoy glass sizes cause I can do something really creative. But <sighs> when we really, really needed beats, I made a ton of beats, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, we teach Nacho how to make beats that even some of the load. Okay. Now we really need flyers anywhere. I can save money by doing the things that I can do anyways, like making flyers or recording people or making beats or whatever it might be. Um, we've gotten commissions to make people's theme songs before and you know wow. let's, let's make that happen we've never done that before i'm, I'm the doer you know yeah. if if we need a video shot and directed i'll make sure that that it gets done and I, i've just always kind of tackled things in that way mm -hmm. whether it's the first time i've done it or not i'll do my research um come up with the best plan that i see fit with the best budget yeah. and the right time frame and uh that's that's the, what i do best is just making stuff happen yeah a, th a think a cool. think tank unto himself again a man of many many hats we're yeah. we're sitting down yeah. here take with ideas and i turn them into a plan yeah yeah that's, that's nice that's huge mm -hmm. and tend to do that for that whole the whole bne umbrella yeah, yeah. very commendable <laughs> oh, appreciate it the glue. <laughs> we're sitting down with papa Squaw here on dog star um, take a break <laughs> <laughs> follow uh pj at papa squat is that on everything uh, Papa Squat official um, on Facebook. If you're looking for the URL, it's Papa Squat for yeah. the name. Perfect. On Instagram, it's p.j.rui. We'll be right back. Dogstar. We're Welcome back. back to Dogstar. Hey, now. We're continuing our conversation with Papa Squat with PJ Rui. Thanks for again for coming through. Yeah, absolutely. We it's were, been a joy so far. Yeah, we were talking so uh, far. So <laughs> far. Promises. <laughs> Go. Uh, we were talking during the break a little bit about, um, you know, chemistry in a music collective during mm -hmm. any musical project, basically. Do you have any, any tips for working with others or? Because I think everybody wants to be in a, in a rap group. Everybody wants to yeah. be in a, in a music group or like in a, like a modern art collective yeah. where everybody's yeah. working around each other. The energy's going. Like yeah, any tips or everybody tricks wants to, that, to starting them or to maintaining them? Yeah, I mean, I've gotten extremely lucky with the group of people that I <laughs> have done it with and to be able to do it for so long and to have some longevity to that is is amazing. Um, that being said, I've had different offshoot projects and I've had so many, like I said, aborted projects yeah. mm -hmm. ever since middle school, you know. And I think the biggest thing is um, to keep your sanity by not trying to make it work with the person you want to make it work with because – while that is sentimental and, and adorable, there's limitless talent in this world. There is mm -hmm. somebody in a house down the street that can wail harder than the person you're waiting for. Mm, yeah. And you just need to get out and find them and make it happen with somebody that's going to make it actually happen. You know, if, if don't sit around and wait for other people. Mm. And, you, you know, from doing hip hop, there's all there's always that talk like we should make it, we should collab on this. We should do this. Mm -hmm. Let's do a song together. And I, my policy is just say yes and move on. And the ones that actually are serious about it will come back and make it happen. And mm -hmm. then I, I'm not going to waste my time chasing people around. Yeah. Um, 
you know, once again, very fortunate for the people I have, but if it wasn't working with them, I'd be looking for someone else to make it work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, you got to keep your own sanity. Otherwise you're just going to be working on letting yourself down in the long run and giving your energy away for free. <laughs> Precisely. And that sounds like, you know, using your energy wisely, using your talent wisely and using your time wisely mm -hmm. is something that you've kind of mastered over the last you know, decade or so working mm -hmm. in so many genres of music, so many different projects. And it gets hard like anything else, but like I was saying, I mean, I've always known that music is what I wanted to do, whether yeah. in any form or capacity at all care if it ends up being just me playing guitar in the corner of the distillery <laughs> that <laughs> is, i'm gonna do music in some form forever yeah you yeah know, as long as i can that's huge it's very very inspirational it's to know that that's your calling to know that that's your purpose here yeah. at, at least in this phase of existence yeah. we'll say and it's it's been consistent through my life and something i've uh, you know, there's been years though where I didn't do it, mm -hmm. where I didn't do music, and they were the worst years, of, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're the Oof. darkest years of my life. But Oof, yeah. I always came back around to it, and it just so happened every time I was doing music, those things improved for me. I had that outlet to okay. be creative, and I had somewhere to process my emotions and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know what else to do. I'm not a I'm not a sit and do Netflix kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. did uh, <laughs> did the pandemic throw off your work ethic at all, or your sanity perhaps, or were you able to kind of keep your nose to the grindstone and keep working? There's there's the obvious setbacks like live music not being mm -hmm. able to do that, which is a huge part of you know running a collective. You know, we got to try to make money, and selling merch only happens at shows. Getting paid for shows only happens if you do shows. Right, and shows and merch are how you make money as a right. musician. Yeah, that general, is, for anybody who doesn't <laughs> yeah, know, like, though, that's how you make music. <laughs> yeah, you make money. Sorry. And I, um, as soon as I could, it ended up setting up an online streaming residency to try to counteract some of that. Oh, which, yeah. Oh, we think we Fa did it together fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, tried to you know double down on merch. I was fortunate that my bubble in coronavirus times was just my was just B and E. Those were the, <laughs> you know, Perfect. most of them were not working. Yeah. Uh, you know, from just being coroned yep. and all that. So, um, and I didn't work with many people. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is the only people I'll be around. So yeah. we stuck to it. You know, it, it was hard. We lost about you know. A year's worth of shows that were already booked mm -hmm. oh, much less than gosh. what we intended to do after that you know mm -hmm. and it it was awful and um but i know yeah i was bummed for like a week straight <laughs> imagine <laughs> but, but when, moly, once we yeah. bounced back we're like all right how else do we make this work let's yeah. let's put up more content and so we just focused on youtube content and streaming mm -hmm. shows for a while and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we're still reaping the rewards from some of that by having all that footage and being able to upload it to YouTube yeah. from years ago, and mm -hmm. you know, which I still have your guys' performance if you ever want it. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. from, the, from the SmackDown, the uh, yeah. Tag Team 2 Championship yeah. rematch. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to talk after the show and get, get, yeah. get, it, get it transferred <laughs> over. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, that's awesome that you guys saw that gap, that mm -hmm. need for performance probably from within. Yeah. You know, we... Yeah. I got it. I got my itching to perform. Let's mm -hmm. do it online. It's, and uh, that was the best that we could do at the time. We made it work. And, yeah, oh, definitely. And you guys did it. It's a little weird when you get done with a song and it's you're in a silent <laughs> recording studio. But yeah, you know, eventually you figure out cool gimmicks like we did with the wrestling. Yeah, you know, online stream and stuff like that it was so fun to be able to do that with you guys. It was awesome. And was such cool. a, I think, such a, a great way to keep the the artist active. Yeah, you know, not having sharp. people exactly mm -hmm. exactly keeping people sharp keeping their talents active yeah yeah that's very cool i guess i got a bunch more questions about uh so obviously the beanie collective awesome and you kind of got your start like throwing parties and then playing at the parties yeah yeah so exactly. like that's that's pretty cool and now you're you you book the shows majorly for uh beanie yeah and yeah, uh, I set up the different shows, and then if people are looking to book anyone with B and E, I'm a good person to get in contact with to find out who's available. And so I book four of the artists as well. That's crazy. And then um, I recently started doing event booking for Eleven Well Spirits as well. So for Dang. Eleven, uh, it's a distillery in East St. Paul, right in my neighborhood. Oh, um, yeah, I make liquor there, bartend, and and book events. So. 
uh, that's been an awesome experience too, being able to apply some of the things I've learned in B&E to an actual paying job. Yeah. Uh, what, or day job, rather. Yeah. Is probably, <laughs> yeah. Alter ego. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I was going to say, what advice could you give to somebody who's like trying to book a show or even throw a show? I mean, besides hitting you up and being like, hey, where can I perform? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Like someone to throw their first show ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say find five or six acts that are super tight and that you can rely on. Start sending out emails. That's the easiest way to get rocking on shows. I mean, obviously showing up to open mics, Yeah. Um, you know, be as professional as you can, mm-hmm. get all your beats in one spot on a hard drive if you have. If you have to, put them on a laptop so you, you can laptop DJ your set so you don't have to pay a DJ. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing it at a show or at a, a venue for your first time, just be super practiced. You don't have to worry about you know, getting a PA and mm-hmm. setting it up and getting microphone, getting equipment, use somebody else's. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough to, when I started doing B&E that we had all that equipment so I could just, all right, let's throw a house party mm-hmm. and <laughs> I'll DJ and you know, my friends will all, will rap and that's it. Perfect. Um, but yeah, practice, 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 like yeah. you said. And, <laughs> and yeah, go use someone else's equipment and time and employees to throw your show. Yeah, because <laughs> you're, you're the second person we've had on Dogs right now that's like, how do you get shows? Like, throw your own shows, and then yeah. you're on a show. It's like, yeah. it's pretty pretty crazy and pretty, mm-hmm. um, what do you call it? Uh, trailblazy, I can't think of the word, but like, Innovative. just like, yeah, we need shows, so I'm going to make the shows happen. Yeah, I was. we never did the... Like people love to do this thing where they see an event page go up on Facebook or something. Can and I they, get on? And they go, okay, no, well, I just put the event page up. It means it's, it's, <laughs> it's done. Set, it's done. And who's putting up all these half cooked events? <laughs> yeah. That, you know, has that ever worked? Uh, and then we would do things like mini rap list with Logan Michaels where we would have six acts. And then at the end of the night, we'd do an open mic. Yeah. And I would post things like for all you guys that jump on event pages looking for already established shows, here you go. Yeah. It's established. You're, you know, earlier in the night, there's going to be professionals doing their thing. And, you know, hopefully that gets you some eyes and you can yeah. perform and you know <laughs> you try to get people out to those things and yeah. it seems like they only want to jump on the shows that aren't ever going to work and Interesting. Um, you know bands or rather venues will accept somebody who's done their first show ever they may not want to but some of these venues need to book music to get yeah. people in the doors you know yes mm-hmm. and you know especially right now when a lot of those places were suffering um to from Corona and everything mm-hmm. to, if you can throw, put a show together, they'll take you. Yeah. you know, it might not be the first one, but send out 10 emails. You're going to get one. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. How, uh, might be a Wednesday at three in the afternoon. <laughs> but. Yeah. You just got to ask. Yeah. yeah. How are your relationships with some of these venues that unfortunately Corona had to cancel the performances at still strong or are they, I'm sure some of them are closed permanently, but the, the ones that are there. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of them, I never had any ill will about it. I'm the, the we throw the hoedown every year. One of those had gotten canceled, and that was awful. But yeah, I knew that those people were getting sent home and aren't punching in just like anyone else. Mm-hmm. So when I all of a sudden wasn't getting emails back going, hey, are we going to still try to do this? And nobody responded. Well, it's because nobody's there. Precisely. I, I can't blame people for having lost their job. Yeah. Or you know, and when they came back, a lot of those reformed. Um, a lot of them closed. I mean, like Just Us closed, Part Wolf closed. Uh, and I had, you know, things lined up with all those. Mm-hmm. Um, Can Can Wonderland went uh, and got completely new staff and management. So mm-hmm. all the people I used to book with monthly, I don't have their contact info anymore. Right. And, and there was a lot of that. But you just check back in. Yeah. Say if you got your stuff together like I do, be like, these are the shows we did. These were the numbers from those shows. This is the booker that I knew. This is how often I did shows. This was our deal. Um, let's set up something. Let's start over again, wow. whatever. But at least I, ha- I already had that rapport and that resume. Yeah. And sometimes they didn't even have that information. So just have, That's your, crazy. have your crap together before you come with a half-cocked plan and you'll be fine. How is the performance space at this distillery you're working at currently? It's a beautiful space. Um, sound there is DIY, so it's a little punk rock when okay. it comes to doing shows. But um, I'm always willing to help bands and, and groups figure that out. We do a lot of blues and jazz during the day. It's the old Hams um, Brewery oh, in East St. Paul. Okay. So wow. Yeah, so it's uh, now a, a distillery. And it's a beautiful, old... Um, kind of rustic looking space and the acoustics are great in the event room where we throw everything because it's all like sandstone-y, cement-y kind of walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, 
we just started doing late night shows. So during the day, we do a lot of blues, jazz, um, country, rock, things like that. Uh-huh. Coming up on Friday, we'll have a metal show after hours cool. with a band from Texas called uh, Civil Serpents. Okay. And some guys I met at Cadence and some other friends of ours. That's awesome. I'm just going to start name dropping. I'm um, new. Yeah, uh, and on <laughs> um, Saturday, we'll have another show headlined by Killed by Kiwis. It's a punk show. It's also a late night show. It'll be a pajama themed punk show. Fun. So we, um, everybody's going to come with pajamas and, and pillows and I assume pillow fight. And we made like cocktails that are themed around the bands and Such the as? events. Um, so Killed by Kiwis made a drink called Killed by Limes. Um, nice. We also made a, a drink called the uh, Pajama Party. And yeah. It's just <laughs> inspired by things that the bands wanted us to have in a cocktail for their audience. And, cool. Um, yeah, we, we do a nerd night with like D&D and video games and we, we have um, Dungeons and Dragons themed cocktails and <laughs> oh, we, what? Yeah, lots of lots of different. That's, nice. uh, that's, that's really that's creative. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have a hip hop show there later in later in the month too af- af- after hours. So. You're saying after hours. Is that like three in the morning like what's after hours so um we cl- the distillery normally closes at 10 okay. so it closes pretty early yes. and i was like well it's, we just have it open during that time why don't we get a different vibe in here okay, um, you know okay. and, and try some things out and people have are very interested and a lot of the people i know through music can fill some of those slots and put shows on and i know some people that don't necessarily fit that vibe during the day where you want to listen to blues and drink in mm-hmm. old fashion Maybe at night you want to listen to metal and crush some black tooth grins, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are trying to to use that space as much as possible. Yeah, trying to get, we just expanded our hours. And when I started, we were open Thursday through Saturday. Now it's Wednesday through Sunday. Hey. Uh, we had to petition like with the city pretty much to mm-hmm. get Sunday liquor sales allowed for us. Oh, and, okay. Which yeah, that was a whole thing because it's like old law writing and um, so Same it's been a, pretty old school. Yeah, it's been a lot like of that. evolving. Um, ever since I got on there and now moving on to doing the um, late night, different genre shows. I'm super excited. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll, and I'll be at them either bartending or helping with sound or something. Well, yeah. So. Make sure you say hello when yeah. you, uh, when you come check it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the guy just running around <laughs> with the multiple hats again, yeah, yeah. Doing, doing multiple things. Yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. A bunch of our guests so far have had the, uh, the venues unlock. You should go back and listen to all the episodes to find <laughs> out uh, all these valuable people. We've got the, the connects. I can't believe our luck. Yeah. And if you're a local artist looking for somewhere to start or, you know, anything like that or looking to do some weirder vibe after hour shows or anything, you can email me. It's events at 11wells.com. So 11wells, 11wells.com. The number 11 and, wells. Uh, let's, we can talk about it. Yeah. And does that derive from like the eleven natural aquifer wells that were at the site? Or Nailed what? it! Yeah, oh, that's no, exactly no. what it is. Okay. So when Ham's Brewing was there, there was eleven wells that they used to make their beer. Interesting. And now, um, now we have, there's more wells that we use, but mm-hmm. I think there's like fourteen. Uh, don't quote me on that, but um, yeah, it's named after the amount of wells so that existed. And it sounds uh, like the, you guys are still using that same well water, water, the same source. Mm-hmm. Are you ever drinking it by the glass, or is it specifically for the product? Um, it's <laughs> it's it's for the product i mean you'd probably be fine i assume but <laughs> we you know filter everything out um, okay. you know like when it's good for whiskey when it's uh, fermented and yes. uh, there's a lot of natural things in there that oh, minerals yeah and then it's all filtered again you know right. once it's fermented and filtered and distilled it's it's yeah that's fascinating not well, like you're gonna get some uh, get river that's awesome you're uh your representatives uh, had sent us two tracks mm-hmm. off of the the most recent Glass Eyes project. Yeah, um, we've got limited time remaining oh, before yeah. we, we've got about two minutes, so we need to take a break, and then we'll only have about five minutes after to, the break to okay. talk about these two tracks. The first track, congratulations, and the third track, Omens, off of the most recent release, the uh, Liminality EP. Yeah. Um, I'd love to pick your brain about uh, the songwriting of that and how those... Which one are we doing first? 
Let's do well, uh, congratulations. Maybe or we could yeah. even, before the break, we could talk about uh, liminality as the name for the album. We we looked up the word before the show. Pretty cool word. Yeah, um, that was uh, Jake's choosing. I think he came up with that. Mm-hmm. I had tossed out a bunch of wacky names, and yeah. we have a, had a hard time naming albums and, and naming the band in, in general. Hmm. And uh, that one just kind of resonated with people. It's um, It's hard to describe. It's like a certain way that, spaces are is liminal which is just like uh he'd be better at (laughs) at describing what it is but if you look it up it uh the way he had described it kind of applied to some of the themes in the record so we were like yeah no that sounds cool that's that's basically all it was what uh what are some of those themes for listeners who uh haven't heard it um a lot of feeling confined trying to break out caught in like certain like in a cell or in 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 things like that just kind of resonated with some of the different songs i think some we had but we didn't overthink it i mean we were tossing out i tossed out like Paul Bunyan's Log Cabin Massacre was mm, one that I tossed okay, out. And okay. I just thought that was rad. Might use it for something like that. And Definitely. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Jake uh, Jake was the mastermind behind the, the naming on that one. He could probably speak more to it. But Sick. I'll nice. have to get him on or something. Jay Pringles. Yeah. Whoa. Very nice. <laughs> uh, we got to take a break in like 15 seconds. Okay. This is Dog Star. Check us out. Dog Star Podcast pretty much everywhere. Uh, B and E music, and Glass Eyes music as well on Instagram. Is it Glass Eyes? Glass Eyes M N. Glass Eyes M N. At official B and E and at P dot J dot Oh wow! Welcome back to Dog Star. Dog Star. Sitting down with Papa Squat, aka P J Rui, or should I say P J Rui, aka Papa Squat? Yeah, either or. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were talking uh, right before the break about about, the, songs. about the, the the project and the themes of the project. Let's get into talking about those two tracks before listeners get to get to hear them. Sure. Yeah. the in, The entire project is very early two thousands new metal sounding, kind of like uh, we talked at the beginning. It's um, there's there's some politics. There's some self hate there's some yeah. frustration with the world um when we were writing it i wanted to write music that made me like feel not so alone when i was a kid mm. you know that like slipknot and eminem people that were so angry about the things that were going on and, and when you're helpless hearing music like that makes you feel not so alone and yeah. that's the, what i wanted to make and i 100 percent think we achieved it on the record it sounds like that era it sounds like that vibe yeah. it just so happens that we're, we're 30 plus now and you know stuff still sucks mm. <laughs> so we're like we're still mad you know yeah. it hasn't gotten better and that anger hasn't went away and i can still headbang so like let's get out there (laughs) yeah and that's what we did and it felt amazing um congratulations is a a sarcastic tongue-in-cheek sort of song it's Mm -hmm. like almost like um congratulations you suck so much right. yeah um, and to open the project with that's the first track is, yeah i think a great <laughs> choice <laughs> yeah and that was our first single um it's the one that's got a music video um up on it i directed and shot the music video and had a blast doing Whoa. it um, it was edited by eric nordrum of group hug creative in duluth he did an excellent job with what I sent him. Yeah. So we were wearing masks in a dark room with covered in balloons. Oh, you know, yeah. it, it was a, um, it's a cool video. It was fun to do. The other song omens is the one that has the most of my influence on it. Mm. Um, the bass guitar kind of drives the lead, um, for the intro. And there's kind of like two big musical movements. There's a, a slow intro, a slow breakdown, and then a main portion of the song Mm -hmm. with a big bpm change in the middle Mm. and that's all me because i can't stay in one bpm i like to mess around with different bpm changes i like weird timings um so that's the one that i had the most influence on so no wonder it's seven and some (laughs) odd minutes long (laughs) and that's track three i mean i'm a sucker for a two three four part song yeah uh, yeah definitely get that vibe for sure i'm gonna have to re-listen to it and for the bass specifically yeah yeah there's there's tons of bass in the intro and so yeah you can kind of hear my um writing shine through and with my influence on that song a lot a lot some of those riffs i had written years prior whoa and um i was like this seems like where i want to use them yeah and these are the people to use them with and it i love that song um i think that's the one that people the most Besides congratulations being the single, yeah. mm-hmm. gravitate towards and say like that's their favorite. Nice. That's awesome. It's How, feel good. When you said you've had these riffs for years, do you just save them in your muscle memory and in your head, or are you recording them in a Pro Tools or in a Fruity Loops? 
when when it comes to playing bass, they if it's good and I know it's good and I wrote it, I can remember it for quite a while. Okay, so oh, it'll, wow. it'll just kind of remember it. And some of those, yeah, like I hadn't, like had played bass for a while when I started Glass Eyes, mm-hmm. and they were riffs that I've always had. Still remembered how to do them. They just never someone used. else wrote it and I learned it. I probably I might forget it if I don't play it for a year. But mm-hmm. right. those things always stuck, and I always wanted to use them and. It all panned out, and everybody else liked it. So very nice. Yeah, you I, you playing with the right hand or the left hand? I'm left-handed, but I play bass right-handed. Interesting. Just, yeah. Is that how you were taught, and that's how you kind of mastered it, or it's kind of what felt natural? Like I write with a pencil, left-handed. I skateboard right-handed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I play hockey right-handed. I play baseball left-handed. Interesting. It's just it's always just what's most comfortable for me. I, I it's kind of weird. That's Plus, cool. there's a lot of things that just aren't made for left-handed people, and so you kind of right eventually. easier to find a right-handed <laughs> when guitar. When I was younger, <laughs> especially. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And you're saying I think it was during the break, so we might as well talk about it again. You're talking about. Uh, pretty well received project the glass eyes yeah. project yeah um people love to hear it especially fans of our older projects um members of glass eyes that is before b and e people that we knew through doing metal they were mm-hmm. like oh you guys are doing metal again and you you started a band with all these people it's that used to be in separate groups that did shows together it's kind of mm-hmm. super group feeling, yeah, yeah even though we're on b and e and right um you know and <laughs> yeah it was, it was awesome man that's so cool. It's great to hear. Are you guys planning a world tour? What's what's the next uh, step for Glass Eyes? Uh, yeah, as we figure out this this portion, you know, which like I was saying, we're hope, hoping to come out of pretty quickly here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, still can't talk about everything. But yeah. my immediate goal is to uh, answer all those emails that I got after we released the record about touring. Nice. Um, man. We got a lot of out of state requests as soon as like our stuff went up wow. people noticed us um especially in the midwest that had similar bands or yeah. just liked our stuff so we had offers for illinois and, and wisconsin and oh, man. duluth and stuff really quickly um that's that's gotta so, feel great yeah that's my when, once we're nice and tight again and everything's figured out with the guitar which hopefully it should be soon then that's my next thing is to reply to those people I told I needed a few months. And that's, <laughs> that's huge. We we got only about one more minute. I want to ask, or perhaps you can uh, give your opinion to the listeners. What are what do hip hop and metal have the most in common? I mean, other than perhaps snares on the three or sure. the instruments used. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say a lot of the themes and emotions come from the same place. Like whether it's anger or poverty or loneliness or whatever a lot of those uh, themes really do come from the same place it's also not the dominant music genre it's yeah. you know might never be counterculture kind it of. is counterculture yeah. i think punk and hip-hop and metal and i love mixed genre shows i wish people went to more of them mm-hmm. and i wish there was more of them because i think the attitudes are all the same yes. and you know we're adults it ain't high school we don't need to click up based <laughs> off whether you like tupac yeah. or mushroom head anymore yes. you know you can like all those things so i get the same feelings from from writing and performing hip-hop that i do for metal it's aggressive and intense so, that's and all opinionated. The time we got. i'm so sorry oh that's okay If you wanna eat it, it's a 
Taking up space where you stand Never moving forward cause you're always in the ground